What up, gang? Welcome back to Love and Spirits. Welcome. Trap Spirits to listen to building. I'm rocking it solo today. And if you want to be a guest on Love and Spirits, welcome. Show up, pull up, hit me up, the Trap Spiritualist on Instagram, and join me. And my buckshot this week, but this week ain't really about the drink. I'm on the drink, buckshot. You know that's my drink. I think I did this last last week or the week before or whatever. It's not even really important. That's not what this episode is about. This episode is about dating. In 2023, this is a guide to dating for the hurt niggas, for the hurt ones. Nah, <clears throat> please excuse my use of the N-word, but this can really apply to women. This can really apply to all genders because there's a lot of them. This can apply to all of y'all. Anybody that's ever been hurt before and ever been through something, you need to abide by these rules. I'm going to give you a little sermon today, and I'm the perfect person to do so because I am an ordained minister, believe it or not. Trap spiritualist. Ordained minister, bro. Ordained minister. Those are credentials. I don't know if it's focused, but those are credentials of ministry because I am an ordained minister. I do this, and I'm going to take you out of church. And we're going to read from the book of Lil Dylan. The book of Lil Dylan, Break My Heart Again. Yes. I don't know if you ever heard that song, Lil Dylan, Break My Heart Again. But it's a very underrated song. And this is the best song that you can use to get you through whatever relationship you about to get into. If you ever been through something, then you understand where this man is coming from. And he dropped some stuff in this song that you need to hear if you finna engage in a relationship. So you need to go and play this song and understand that this is what you need to follow. You need to affirm. You need some affirmations in your life. And you need to do this chorus. And when I get up in the morning, I'm going to sing this chorus. Every morning in the mirror to myself. Because I never let a bit break my heart again, bruh. You too aggressive. You being extra. You just like the rest. You ain't nothing special. Temporary. I can tell it. Learn to walk away when it's necessary. Why? Because I never let a bitch break my heart again. Break my heart again. <clears throat> I never let a bitch break my heart again, break my heart again, but hold up. If you don't get up in the morning and say that in the mirror, say that I never let a bitch break my heart again, break my heart again. Say that. Let me put my reading glasses on because y'all don't understand. That this is gonna be a sermon. We finna really get into this right now. This song, bro. And from the book of, from the book of Lil Donald, from the book of Lil Donald, break my heart again, bro. Chapter, chapter one, verse one, book of Lil Donald, break my heart again. What he say? He say, you telling me that that nigga just your brother? You think I'm stupid? You think I'm booty? He said, you telling me that nigga your brother? You think I'm stupid? And you think I'm booty? You don't just think I'm stupid, you think I'm booty. See, that's the problem. It's women out there that think you booty, bro. They think you straight booty. They think that you ain't gonna inquire and ask no questions. She done brought that whole dude in front of you. Telling you that, oh, that's just my brother, that's just my best friend, we just, we just friends, we home. Don't trust that. Don't trust no woman bringing you some dude and telling y'all that she just friends, they just best friends. 
That's how brother they like brothers. Ugh. I don't like him like brother. One like the other one. It, maybe they both had sex before or tried to have sex or something. There's been something that's going on. Or one want the other one or wanted the other one. They just didn't line up the right way at that particular time or whatever. It's something deeper underneath the surface. Don't never accept that. No, it ain't never just we just brother or sister. We just, it's just innocent. We just best friends. I really just get along with just mostly guys. Yeah, whatever. We already know what the business is. Stop. Don't just accept that. You know what's coming after that. You know something that happened in the past. You know there's been some issue and you got some whole man in your face just playing it cool, just playing his role, knowing one day or praying one day he gonna get him a shot in and you know it. And you just gotta sit there and be cool with it and be cool and embrace this man and accept this man, bring this man in your house, knowing it gonna be some shit. That bull shit, don't let nobody tell you that. Don't let no woman put you in this situation. If you wanna get into a relationship and she's still holding on to a best friend or a brother, we like brothers, we've been knowing each other since high school. It's been since high school. We've been, we've been really good since high school. Since we. If that what it is, let it. If she ain't willing to let it go, you let it go. You let that relationship go because it's gonna be a world of trouble down the line for you as a man. Otherwise, you booty then, bro. Just like you say, you booty, you booty, bro. So you better, you better figure out what you want to be. You want to be single or you want to be booty in this relationship with that woman that you're playing you. That's just what I'm saying. He break it down in, in chapter 1, verse 1, right there in the first line. He lets you know. You think I'm stupid? He ain't stupid. You want to be stupid? There's some stupid people out there right now, and I want you to wake up and be unstupid. That's all I'm saying. Wake up from stupidity. You ain't got to be stupid your whole life, bro. You can wake up. Just, just wake up. Just wake up. It's okay. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. And all I'm saying is... You being the man, let's say you already know. You know how other men think. You know what, what other men want and what other men have going on. We understand each other as me. We very simple. We very simple creatures. We understand each other. And if you got this whole other man and you knowing that he desiring your chick, but he might not be able to get her at that particular time, or maybe a had her and waiting for his opportunity to get her again, or whatever the case may be. It's some shady shit going on, is all I'm saying. And we know that as a man, and you got a problem with it, you have an issue with it, you want to say something about it, you want to do something. Maybe if your woman know that you the type that you go that you gonna fly off the handle, you gonna do something, you gonna hurt somebody, you gonna go to jail about something, and she willing to put you in a situation, she don't care about you. If she willing to put you, know you crazy. If you know you crazy, and she know you crazy, and she know you gonna do something crazy and violent. And I'm not advocating for violence whatsoever. I'm not for that in relationships, but. If you know you crazy and she know you crazy and she gonna put you in a situation to display your crazy because a woman would love to put you in a situation or say that you put her in a situation to be crazy and anything that a woman does that's violent or crazy she will say that you put her in a situation to be that way and that will be okay so I'm saying the reverse of that if you with somebody who's willing to put you in a situation, knowing you crazy, knowing you're going to fly off the handle and do something wild, she don't care about you. Walk away. Care about yourself enough to say that this person going to put me in a bad situation. This person going to lead me into something. If she got you in situations where she out acting up in the street and you got to go fight motherfuckers because she ain't acting right. She putting herself in situations where she getting approached the wrong way and doing all of this type of shit. And you got to find yourself in situations that you wouldn't normally be in. But you the man, you the tough guy, you the alpha. You want to do what you know you're supposed to do. But you shouldn't have to do that. Because you shouldn't be with somebody that's going to put you in them situations. Because they shouldn't want you to be gone. They shouldn't want you to be locked up. They shouldn't want you to be away. Because nine times out of ten, if they putting you in them situations, when your ass is gone locked up, because you wanted to be protector, she gonna be running around 
with the same motherfuckers that you was beating up on. With the same people that you was defending her against. And the same motherfuckers that you have, she gonna be running with them. You got to care for yourself. You got to care enough about yourself to not let nobody put your... I never let her break my heart again. Break my heart again. I'm just saying. Man, let me move on, bro. Let me move on to the next one. What do you say? He say, you won't even cook a meal for a nigga that keep it real and got a problem spending no money. Oh, what'd he say? He say, you won't even cook a meal for a nigga that keep it real and got a problem spending no money, but you just a bill. He say, you won't even spend a meal. You won't even cook a meal for a nigga that keep it real, but ain't got a problem spending money. You just a bill. See, y'all of y'all... I understand because I'm the generation that grew up on Schoolhouse Rock, and I think we took it the wrong way. I think some of y'all took that shit the wrong way. Some of y'all grew up on Schoolhouse Rock, just like me, and y'all heard that shit. I am a bill. I am only a bill, and I am sitting here on Capitol Hill. Like you took that shit, and you was like, I'm a bill. Look, city, city girl, city boy shit. You was like, I'm a bill. I'm a bill. I'm a bill, you gonna have to spend that money, spend it. I'm a bill, like run it up. If that what you looking for, if you looking for a bill, bro, it's a lot of bills running around that's waiting for you to just pay for them and take care of them. I want a partner. I don't want a bill. I want a go-getter and a partner, somebody that bring their own half to the table, and then I can bring my half to the table, and then we can make something great, and then if it don't work out, then you can go be great, and then I can go be great. Ain't nobody got to start from the bottom and build themselves up and take from somebody else. Everybody brings something to the table. I want somebody to bring somebody, something to the table. I don't want to... I don't want to be dating a daughter. I don't want to be dating somebody I got to raise and take care of and feed and clothes and all of that. That's a child. That is a child, sir. I don't want a child, sir. I want a woman. I want a woman. I don't want a child. Some of y'all want children. Some of y'all want to sleep with children. Not That sound wild. I don't mean that in that way. I'm going to have to bleep that out. Some of y'all want the wrong <laughs> type of relationship, in my opinion, and I want to be with somebody that's a partner, partner, partner. So, that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Partnership is what I'm looking for. Like, somebody who build. It's like, if you bring something to the table, I want everybody in my friend circle, though, to be on. Like, I want a friend circle of people who all own, and everybody's doing well, and everybody's on that level. I don't want to be above nobody. I don't be. I mean, I've been under people, and that's a great place to be because you're learning. So I, I'm not gonna be against that. It's like I've, I've been friends with people who are doing way better than me, and they taught me a lot. And our relationship has worked well because I'm not asking for anything, asking for any handouts. I'm just like soaking up game, and I'm in the room, and then I'm going back to my life, and I'm applying what I learned. Without them telling me to do it, they just see me doing it, and then it's like, oh, all right, bro, all right, I like what you're doing, I like how you're moving, you really listen this, all right, so let me tell you some more, let me show you some more, because I, I understand you really listen, I see, I see it, okay, cool, then the situations I want to be in, and I want to take that to the team, and I want to build everybody up, so when one fall, we all have ups and downs, we never all going to be up. And when one fall, somebody else can help pick you up. And it's not picking you up from way down here. It's like picking you up from here. It's like we all we all up. And vice versa. We all do it for each other. That's the kind of relationship that I want. And that's the kind of business I want. I don't care if my I get with a woman who got her own crib. I got my own crib. We ain't got to live together. Or if we do, we got our own separate places that we turn into rental property. So... <laughs> investment so if things don't work out between the two of us we ain't got to split each other assets we got our own stuff i got my own over here you got your own over there you do a whole lot of unnecessary shit when you need somebody 
when you want somebody and you with somebody because you want to be with them, you don't really need them, you want to be with them, that's when the relationship is real. All that BS happened in y'all relationships because a lot of y'all need somebody. Scared to go be by yourself and don't think you can survive being by yourself. And that's why a lot of people in them relationships, some of y'all wouldn't be in them relationships with them people that y'all with if y'all could, y'all had enough to go and be on your own. Had enough money, was able to take care of yourself without the other half. Hmm. So I'm, I'm all about building and getting with somebody who builds and we can build. <laughs> I, that ain't no word, but whatever. Let me get back into this. This church, bro. I'm gonna have church with y'all, bro. Y'all ain't even understanding where I'm coming from with this. Well, I'm just saying. Partnerships. I'm all about partnerships. Is what I'm saying right now. Okay, now as I talk about my circle of friends and how I want my circle to be, some of y'all got the wrong circles. Some of y'all are in the wrong circles, and some ladies are in the wrong circle of friends. That's what he says in chapter one, verse one, paragraph two. He says what he say. He say, all your friends tell you to leave, but they in my DM. So your friends, his girl's friends is telling him or telling her to leave him, but they in his DM. Because some of y'all are going and talking about your blessings to the wrong people. And those people don't have your best interests at heart. You thinking they're your friends and they're not really your friends. Some people just want to hear what you got to say to plot on your situation. You telling them exactly how to get over on you, how to get, how to get to you, how to, how to do whatever they want to do to you. You telling them exactly how to do it, and they disguising it as wanting to be your friend. Tell me everything, girl. Nah, bro, you can't tell everybody everything. Or be prepared. If you telling everybody everything, be prepared for what might happen with it. Only lay out things that you willing for everybody to know. You prepared for what come with it because everybody ain't got your best interests at heart. Some people want to do you harm. Some people hear what you got going and know their situation ain't like that. They ain't got no man like that. How you got and then your situation going good. So they try to sabotage your situation so, so they can be up in there. I don't think you... They don't think you want to be... Alright. You, you know what I'm saying. They want to be where you at. They want what you got. You done told them how good it all was. You done told them about the sex experience. You done told them everything. You done told them how, how it all went down. How it all was. How it all is. They want a piece of that. They don't have that. So they going to try to sneak in it. In them DMs. Why they telling you you don't want to be with him. They in them DMs. You just don't even know. You don't understand. Watch the company that you keep. Watch the company that you keep is all I'm saying. That's what he's trying to tell you in chapter 1, verse 1, paragraph 2 is all I'm saying in the book of Lil Dylan. Let me get back into it. This is the best song if you get into a relationship, I'm telling you. Next, he say, you want to be wifey, but you ain't the wifey type. You want to be respected, but you twerk for likes. But I'ma subscribe to your OnlyFans. But I won't let you convince me that I'm your only man. Ooh, he must have been dating the Leo. He must have been dating the Leo. It's a song with Tiger and YG. And my favorite part is a new song, Tiger and YG. I don't know the name of it. But my favorite part is YG say my Leo is a sneako. That shit hit so hard. It hit, it hit so hard because <clears throat> Leo is a sneak hoe. Bruh, sneak. I'm just saying. Been there. Been there. I've had nothing but problems. Me and Leo's don't get along. If you get with a Leo, just know a Leo is gonna be a sneak hoe. They love attention. And you ain't gonna be a, you ain't gonna be able to give them enough attention. You ain't gonna never be enough for a Leo. So you got to share. You're going to have to share if you got a Leo. 
It's because your Leo going to be a sneako. It's all I'm saying. They love attention. I've had problems. I've been there a couple times. I know what I'm talking about. Don't at me. Or at me if you want to. We can fight about it. We can argue about it if you want to. I know what I'm talking about. I done been there enough with more than one Leo. And they've been sneako. And we've had some problems. I've been hurt. <laughs> I know what I'm talking about. Let me read that again. He said you want to be wifey, but you ain't the wifey type. How you want to be wifey, but you ain't wifey type? I be hearing people talk about that and want to be wifed up and all that. But in been in situations with people that say that they that. But then you hold them back all the qualities that show you that. Until somebody make you that. Which I don't feel like that's how that work. I don't go and like, I'm not going to go buy a car that's not a car yet because I feel like it got the potential to be a car. I mean, I do. I have done that. I have bought project cars and built them to fully functioning cars. And that takes a lot of work. And that takes a lot out of you. And that's a lot of stress. And a lot of times those cars just sit up and end up being just parts in the backyard. And so many people just have part projects and parts scattered all over the place that they just end up needing to get rid of because you bite off more than you can chew because you're thinking that it's going to be easy to turn this into a car. It's going to be easy to turn this project car into a car. It's almost a car. You can easily make it into a car, right? No, it's difficult. It's difficult, sir. It's really difficult finding parts to make this car a car. And then you just go out and you end up buying a car from the dealership because now you need a car to get around while you're trying to turn this other car into a car. And so then you end up forgetting about the other car that you're trying to turn into a car. And now you're just driving the car that you bought that was already a car because you realized that you needed a car that was already a car more than you needed a car that wasn't a car yet. And that makes sense because what I'm saying is if you wifey, be wifey, and then be accepted as wifey. So when I go to the wifey store and I'm trying to find a wifey, then I find somebody that's already exhibiting wifey qualities instead of finding somebody who's saying that they're ready to be wifey, but they going to wait until they being made wifey to show the wifey qualities. So I don't really know what I'm getting until I already signed all the paperwork and I maybe I don't want to do that because maybe... These are the types of wifey qualities that I, I'm really looking for. Maybe I want a Toyota kind of wifey qualities that's reliable and I ain't got to be putting no maintenance into it. And maybe this is a Jeep Wrangler wifey. Maybe she's a Jeep wifey. Maybe she needs a lot of work. Maybe she might be loved and attractive and look good. And you might be able to take her out and show her off to all your friends. And they all like her because she's really popular and she really looks cool. And there's so many cool accessories that look good on her and all of that. And it's all cool to other people who got you wranglers and you can hang out with all of y'all. And y'all do the cool, like, fun hand signs to y'all because y'all all got G Wrangler wifeys. But maybe you don't want to put the amount of maintenance that goes into it, and then she hits you with the death wobble and then she's all death wobbling all over the place and then always in the shop because she need a whole lot of maintenance and her suspension ain't always right and then you got to upgrade everything to be able to really do all the things that you want to do you got to provide so many upgrades because if you don't provide the upgrades when you try to go out and do whatever you want to do, rock climbing and whatnot, then your dream brand of wifey ain't going to be ready to go and do that and go break down on you because that wasn't that uh, you didn't put the right amount of work in. And then you stressed out and then you got to sell your Jeep Wrangler wifey because you really needed the Toyota wifey because you just wanted to get in and go. You didn't want to have to deal with all the stress. It's all I'm saying. That's just what I'm saying. I don't really know if you're really following me where I'm going with this, but it's really making a lot of sense to me the way that I just laid it out. So I hope that it's really kind of understandable to you because it's really understandable the way that I'm saying it. And you stupid if you really don't get it because 
I said it perfectly. Let's get back into the book of Lil Dylan, bro. <laughs> Y'all think I'm playing. Y'all think I'm playing. Follow this. Follow me if you about to get into a relationship. And you been hurt before. If you ain't never been hurt before, get out there and get hurt. You're going to have to get hurt. You deserve to get hurt sometimes because through pain comes growth. And you got to grow. Those of us that have been hurt before, we've grown enough. Stop getting hurt, bro. You, you ain't got that much more time left to be keep getting hurt. Like, your tolerance is, is getting really, really low for being hurt. And it's not going to work out for you. That's who I'm speaking to right now. Let me get back into the book. Wifey, but ain't the wifey type. Come on, bro. Come on. But he's saying I'ma still subscribe to your OnlyFans. But you ain't finna keep it because you twerk for likes. You twerk for likes. You doing everything that these girls doing on the Instagram. You doing what they doing on the gram. We need separation. Everybody trying to be everybody. Everybody trying to be the same. Everybody want to be an Instagram model. Everybody thinking that you got to be an Instagram model. No, bro. We need all sizes of women. We need small, medium, large. We need we need wifey women. We need horse. We need horse. We need we need Instagram models. We need all of that. We need a clear separation between all of that. Do you want to go Instagram model? You want to be a whore? You want to be a whore? You want to be a respectable lady in the streets? Whatever you add in your life, you want to be multiple things at different parts in your life, whatever. That's cool, but give us a clear separation between which one you want to be. Everybody can't just be all at all times. It's confusing. And that's not what everybody's looking for. You gotta go looking at the horse store. You don't wanna go to the horse store looking for wifeys. You don't go buy wifeys at the horse store. You don't go buy whores at the wifey store. You're not gonna go to the wifey store and like, it's me, excuse me, it's my horse. Which island is the horse on? Where's the horse? Yeah, you're not gonna do that. Or you're just gonna be wasting your time. Cause why you in here? Why you in there? I don't go to the club. I've aged out of that, but I did that when I was younger. I was doing that. I was in the club doing clubbish things. And then I got tired of that. And I wasn't looking for what you could find in there. So I'm not gonna go there. What I'm looking for ain't in there. I'm gonna go to a lounge. A lounge. What I can find, what I'm looking for can be found in a lounge. Everything ain't everywhere. Everybody shouldn't be trying to be everything else. Find your lane. Stay in it. And he must have been talking about a Leo because he said, I'm not going to be convinced that I'm your only, only man. But I'm going to subscribe to your only fans. You need fans. You want to live this social media life. You want to have all this attention from all these different people. You want your butt all on the Instagram. You want to do all of this, but then you want to say you wifey at the same time. Negative. But I'm still going to support you, though. I still support you. It's still love. It's still love is what he's saying. It's still love. You in the place that you want to be, and I'm recognizing where you at in your life at this particular time, and I respect it. It's all love. I'm going to support you. I'm going to subscribe. I'ma subscribe to the bullshit that you sending me, to what you giving me. I'ma subscribe to what you showing me, not what you trying to tell me that it is. Is what he's saying. I'ma subscribe to what you showing me. Stop listening to what people saying to you. You can't listen to what people saying no more in 2023 and, and forward. You gotta listen to actions. Actions speak louder than words. That means so much. Do not listen to the words that people be saying because they just talking. Everybody say the same thing. Same talking points from the internet. Watch their actions though.
And let me get back into that. But hold up. After that, after he takes you from there and drop them gems on you, what he say? What he say? He say. We're gonna get into verse two. He go back into the chorus. Go back into our affirmation. Hopefully you remember what our affirmation was, what we say in the mirror. Every morning when we wake up, he gets back into that affirmation. And then he gonna go into verse two. He gonna hit you with verse two real quick. And verse two, he say, you wasn't in love with me. You just seen all the shit I got. You wasn't in love with me. You just seen all the shit I got. All the shit I got. You want in love with me? You don't even know who I am. That happens so much. People be so in love. People will totally ignore you, who you are. You could be everything that somebody looking for, and they'll totally ignore you and look right past you because you ain't got the lifestyle that they want to look good on the Instagram. You see all these relationships. On Instagram, the fake ass relationships that be on Instagram where everybody's showing you the highlights and then you think that that's what relationships supposed to look like. Why my shit don't look like that? I want the shit that look like that. Not knowing that a lot of this is fake and orchestrated just to give you this appearance. So you ignore something good that you got because it don't look like that. It don't look like the trips and all of this, just buying this for you, buying that, and all the expensive this, and the vacations, and life's all the beauty of life. None of the drama, none of the, the issues. But people be going through it offline. But they just showing you all the best of the best. And I'm going to tell you straight up, this is going against guy code too, but I'm going to go against guy code for a second and tell you that a lot of them dudes that, that show you like, the greatest dudes on Instagram that's doing the most for their women, all them dudes cheat. And the reason all them dudes cheat is majority of the time, dudes is doing that shit to impress other women. Ain't nothing gonna get a woman like a bad woman. Y'all ain't hear me. Ain't nothing gonna get you a woman like a bad woman. First of all, if you got a super attractive woman, that's going to get you other women because other women going to look at you like if you give them any attention, damn, well, if he fucks with that and he's looking at me, that must mean I'm on that level. Oh, sh he only fucks with bad bitches. That means I'm a bad bitch. That's what they think. Ain't nothing gonna get you a bad female like another bad female. And them dudes know that. You seeing them buy flowers and take girls on trips and all that other shit. All he got to do is tell you some sob story that ain't even gotta be true about her not being grateful for all the shit that he doing. For you to be like, oh my god, you're such a great guy. I would love to have a guy that does all those things for me. Oh my God, you do everything for her. How dare she not appreciate it? You don't know what's going on in the people relationship. You don't know what the hell he doing. You don't know what the hell them people going through. He just telling you some sob story about she ain't appreciating him for all the shit that he doing. Whether it's true or not, and you seeing all the pictures and all of the shit on Instagram of what's being done, and you thinking it's real life, and you following it, you falling for it, you sleeping with him, and then he going to doing that 20 more times. Watch, rinse, and repeat. Because you seeing the picture on Instagram and you thinking that that's what it is. And then you're going to find yourself right in that situation with somebody that's doing that same dog ass shit to you. But if you could put on a smile and walk into a big house and be in a nice car on Instagram, you're going to put up with that. You're gonna, a lot of people going to put up with it. You gonna go through it, uh, whatever, I guess it's worth it. Is it worth it? Is it really worth it? Do you really care about the person that you with? Or do you care about the shit and the way that that shit look to other people? I much rather be happy on the inside versus 
having some other people think that I'm happy. All I'm gonna say is I really hope that y'all really appreciate me for what I'm dropping from this song that I have no parts in. I have no connection to this song whatsoever. And no, I, I'm just trying to help. That's all I'm saying. I'm trying to help. Let me get back to this then. Verse, chapter, chapter 2, verse 2. <laughs> Paragraph 3. Let's get into it. What do you say? What do you say? He talking about keep on making all them posts while you being subliminal. Keep on making all them posts. Why you being subliminal? Why? Why you doing that? Why you doing that? A lot of people post. Like, give me a woman who don't post every time something happened in a relationship. You get on social media. You acquire these followers. This happened in a lot of relationships, bro. Emotional cheating is... This is why I feel like majority of women cheat. All right. Men, all right, it's been talked about that men cheat. Oh, majority of men cheat, men cheat. I think more women cheat for sure than men. Absolutely 100% majority because women are naturally emotional creatures. With, and when you're emotional creatures, you have men who are predators when it comes to emotion. Men predatorize or they prey on emotions. So they know when a woman is vulnerable and the reason they know is because what he say what he say he said keep on making all them posts why you being subliminal because you making posts whenever y'all have an argument what run to the internet boom 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 internet run to it posting all of these subliminal pictures to let all of these dudes that she got that's just waiting this dude's all in line on the follower side, just waiting, waiting for something to go wrong. At any sign of some subliminal relationship problem post, motherfuckers is like, you okay? In your, in your DMs, everything, you so beautiful, you so this, and you so that. Telling you everything that you want to hear. Because you done hit them with the subliminal. And maybe you doing it on purpose because you know you finna get that attention. That's cheating. That's cheating, young lady. That's an emotional cheating. No matter how far you take it, you take it all the way or you don't. Because you getting that gratification. Emotional gratification is just as important to a woman as sexual gratification is to a man. That makes it the same level of cheating. I'm just a messenger, bro, but I'm just saying it's true. It's cheating. And you doing it, and you probably doing it on purpose. So when you making all them subliminal posts, dudes is hitting you up, they knowing, they knowing what's up. When you walking in your attitude change and you upset and you got that upset face on, they know what to hit you with because they preying on them emotions. They see the emotions, you wearing emotions all over your face. You got the big glasses on. You got the big dark glasses on in the middle of the daytime inside. He know you've been crying. Everybody knows you've been crying all day. It's time to hit you with some shit. As soon as you get out of a relationship, then you happy. You cut your hair. You cut your hair. You dye your hair. Change your hair color. And then you, your emotions is high and you're doing this. We can see it. We see it all over your face. Oh, damn. It's that shot. Oh, you look more beautiful than ever. You just had a third. Hitting you with all the compliments. Hitting you with all the right shit. Because we know. We see it. You hit us with the subliminal and we right on there. And a lot of women, majority, are going to have a group of dudes that's just lying in wait. Ready. Just ready for the signs. As soon as the signs show up, attack. Time to go. Let's get it. Let's get her. Let's get her. She ready. Let's get her. I'm praying on you. I'm just saying. Give me somebody who don't post every time something go away. Don't be doing the subliminals. That's what I want. Does that exist? Are you out there? Are you out there? 
somebody who don't post the subliminals every time something happened in the relationship, the attention getters, they not posting the attention getters, they not uh, lip syncing to the sad song on the, on the Instagram stories every time. Where you at? You exist? I know you out there. I have faith. I'm gonna meet you one day. You out there. I'm gonna meet you. I'm gonna move on anyway. Whew. It's gonna get deep. It's gonna get deep. Hold up. This is gonna get deep because we're getting close to the end. So it's gonna get deep. Hold up. Let me roll on. He said, You treat me like a criminal. Damn. Free me. He said, Free me. You treat me like a criminal. Oh, you got me going through all this shit in here. You got me in this house. I'm dealing with all this shit I'm doing for you. I'm paying for shit and buying you shit and doing all kind of shit for you. And then you treat me like I'm the one that's out doing dirt. And then you doing all this shit for attention. Got all these men in your DMs and all this other bullshit going on. You don't really care about me. You care about what I can do for you. The picture. Of this relationship more than you care about the actual relationship damn I'm a prisoner to this situation I'm stuck I am stuck men know all about being a prisoner because so many men are in relationships that they are prisoners too to the point where if you decide that you're gonna get up and leave it's gonna cost you everything half of your money your income your paycheck everything is gonna be gone sir everything that you worked hard for is gonna be gone sir Gone! Out the door! And you're gonna have to still pay some money on top of that to take care of her after she's gone. Cause she wasn't a partner. She was a child. She was your child. You were her daddy. So now you're gonna have to take care of her forever. Oh! She already passed 18. Why are you taking care of her? Cause she wanted to call you daddy. You wanted to be daddy so bad, now you taking care of her. Until she find another daddy, which may not ever happen. Or she may find one and still you taking care of dad, her and him. Ooh, you a prisoner. Free me, free you. Ooh, free you. Free you. Some of y'all going out there and cheating because y'all feel like y'all deserve it because you're stressed. You can't go home. You hurt. You in a situation you don't want to be in, then you can't walk away because you chose wrong. And you made babies and you chose wrong. And you hurt. I want you to know that there's a way out, but it's going to cost you. The way out is going to cost you, but get out. It's going to cost you, but get out. They say it's cheaper to keep her. Do you want to keep that stress? That's why men die early. Jesus, that's why men die before women, bro. Oh my God. It's cheaper to keep it. Decide. Decide your fate. It's saw. It's saw. Once you get into a relationship and you start having kids and all that other shit, it's saw. I want you wanna play a game? Do you wanna play a game? I wanna play a game. You can leave. You can exit this relationship at any time. But you're gonna lose an arm and a leg. Right here is a piece of paper. All you have to do is sign it to get out of this relationship. And if you sign this piece of paper, half of your bank account is going to be gone immediately. As soon as you sign this piece of paper. And half of your paycheck. Half of your paycheck is going to be gone. Every every two weeks. For, for the foreseeable future. There's going to be alimony. Let's play a game. You wanna play? Y'all niggas is in saw. <laughs> y'all niggas, niggas is in saw. Y'all done chose so many bad bitches. Y'all bad bitches got y'all in saw, nigga. God damn. Ah! I don't wanna be in saw. I don't wanna play these games with y'all, bro. Jesus Christ, I'ma pray for y'all. I'ma pray. I'ma pray. We got to keep on rolling forward because we on a limited amount of time. <laughs> Woo, y'all in saw, bro. Y'all in saw.
Shit. As we move forward, he says, you know you the problem. Why the fuck you burning sage? A lot of y'all got caught up in this crystal shit. And I'm gonna I'm do a whole episode about this. But y'all done got caught up in these crystals. Y'all done got caught up in this sage. Y'all done got caught up in this Palo Santo. Y'all burning all this shit. And y'all don't know that's all. That's why your life fucked up. That's why you having problems. Sometimes you having problems because you burning sage. But you the devil. You fucking burning sage to get rid of the bad spirits. But you the bad spirit, and you wondering why your life is starting to be more and more fucked up. It's because you saging the shit out of your own self. You saging problems into your own life because you the motherfucking problem. You getting rid of yourself. <laughs> you fucking exiting yourself out of your whole situation. And that's why the more you burn that shit, the more bad shit happens to you. Because you saging your own goddamn self out of your own house. <laughs> because you the goddamn devil. <laughs> Stop fucking... And don't just expect the sage to wipe away all your bullshit. <laughs> Sometimes it's you, motherfucker. Sometimes it is you. It is you that's fucked up. Not the sage. The sage ain't gonna save you all the time. Sage ain't gonna help you all the time. Oh, you burning sage. Why you burning sage and you crazy? Why you burning sage and you crazy? I don't deserve to be here with some of y'all. I deserve to be someplace better. <laughs> cause some of y'all crazy. Hold up. I'm gonna keep going cause I can't stop there for too long. Cause y'all crazy. She said, she gonna, she gonna take all them secrets to her grave. And I never met a hoe that could be saved. Now I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell the truth. I'm gonna tell the truth. Hold up. She's going to take all the secrets to her grave. It's plenty of women that's going to take secrets to their... First of all, it's a lot of women, a lot of y'all in relationships with women who have cheated on you because you did something that pissed them off and they have gone off and done some shit to get back at you, but they know they can't beat you physically and you might be a little bit crazy. So, I'm never going to tell you the shit that I did, but every time you piss me off again... I am going to live in that moment of that time that I got back at your stupid ass and you have no fucking clue. And that's the best thing for them. That's the best feeling for them. Knowing that they got back at your ass and you don't know shit about it. They fucked your homeboy, your best friend, and you playing with this nigga. You going out, hanging out with this nigga all the time. Don't know that she done done all kind of shit with this nigga. You ain't going to never find out about it. And having a blast. Thinking about that shit whenever you piss her the fuck off. I knew somebody that knew somebody who was in a relationship that I felt bad. I felt bad, but I'm not close enough to the dude in this situation to, to even be talking to him and, and on no guy code shit. But his woman was friends with a celebrity. Every time this particular celebrity come in town... They have an argument. He don't know that. She probably having arguments with this nigga because she know that this other motherfucker coming in town. So she having an argument with him to get out the house. Fuck you, I'm leaving. I'm like, I can't deal with this shit right now. I'm finna go. Da -da 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 -da. You think she going to her family house because she y'all having a little spat. Nigga, she going to the hotel. She going to the hotel with this dude. Getting bust down for the whole time that this motherfucker is in town and then coming back to you ready to work shit out once he gone. And then some some bullshit magically pop up again once he coming back in town because she just wanna go get bust down, bro. Hey, it happens. Women feel like that just like dudes. Some women want two, three, some women want more. It is what it is. So I'm gonna take it to the grave. You ain't gonna never know. So just assume that it's, it's you. Just assume that it's happening to you, bro. You might as well assume that it's happening to you because 
a lot of times you ain't gonna know if it is, even you just ain't gonna know. I'm just saying, you just might not. It is what it is. Let's keep it rolling. Anyway, he says, I really started to feel like you were a blessing. God showed me that you were really a lesson. Some of y'all think y'all with y'all blessings. And you really with a lesson. And I done been with some lessons. I done been with plenty of lessons in my life. And sometimes your lessons are detouring you away from your blessings. You have a path that you're supposed to follow. And you following the wrong motherfuckers that's leading you off your pathway. And that shit finna be a lesson for you. I've done that a few times. Your pathway is here. But it's some branches that'll catch your eye along that path. People that you know you shouldn't be fucking with. Same personality or something that you fuck with before. It's your pattern. Your pattern is to keep fucking with this same personality. It might be wrapped in a whole nother outer casing. You might only fuck with black or white or this. And this is a whole nother nationality. Or this is a whole nother body type or this, that. But the personality that's inside is the same shit as the pattern that you was fucking with before. It's not about what's on the outside. It's about what's on the inside right there. Because you done fall for that same pattern. And that shit done took you off the path. So you got to learn that lesson all over again. Because you didn't learn it last time. Or this might be your first time learning this particular lesson. But you're going to learn it. And you're going to learn it the hard way. Eventually, I feel like those lessons are going to keep you away from that path. That you're really supposed to be following. If you keep branching off and keep keep meeting lessons instead of really paying attention, staying on your path, really following and paying attention to your intuition, following your intuition. When the red flags show up, pay attention to them. Listen to them. Those red flags mean something. Don't go that way. Don't veer off. Let that go. It might look good on the outside. Let it go. It ain't going to be right. Do you really want to take that trip? And you know where it's going to lead to. And then it's going to take you longer out there. And then you got to come back. Life is short. You only got so much life. Life is short. You spend all of that time out this way. Learning these lessons. By the time you get back here. When your life was supposed to go out. All the way here to your purpose. You might fall short. Because you only got this much time. You might not even make it to your purpose. That's only my personal opinion of how that works, but I feel like you could fall short of your purpose by branching off to too many lessons that you don't have to take. Sometimes you gotta let other people learn them lessons for you, and you gotta just listen to other people and just pay attention to them red flags and your intuition and stay off them damn lesson trails. Stay away from them damn lessons. And if you Stay away from so many lessons. Some lessons are vital and necessary. Life is about pain. When pain comes growth, you're going to have to go through to get to. That's what life is about. But some lessons you repeat, and is what, that's what I'm talking about. Some lessons you repeat and some lessons that you could have learned from somebody else. That you didn't have to go through that. You, heard, you saw somebody else. Go through that and you know what the outcome was. So you didn't have to take that path. But you did anyway. That's what I'm talking about. Stay away from those. You take it too many of those. If you learn to stay on your path. You met your lesson. Get back to your path. That lesson is going to be looking back at you. Stressing. Because your lesson is way over there. Nowhere near where their purpose is supposed to be. They looking at you stressing because they don't know how to move forward. And they see you constantly going up. That brings me to the last line of the song. Your lesson looking at you stressing. If you taking your path to where you supposed to be. Your lesson should be looking back at you stressing. I've been teaching you from the book of Lil Donald. Break my heart again. Go listen to that song. I'm telling you. Use that as an affirmation. Put it in. Say it every day in the mirror. 